Hello, so Father Rich in the uh, front hall of the rectory, coming to you for our next masterpiece. It's number 35, um, The Heart of the Andes, and it's another landscape painting uh, done by kind of a disciple of our last painter, um, who was what, Thomas Cole. So I'm just here in front of a landscape picture that we've had since I got here in the hallway here. I, I wasn't able to nail down who did this or what it's of, but it made me think of um, this picture. And it's a, it's a beautiful uh, picture. He actually went to South America. He did it in 1859, but he went to South America. And this is one thing the church would do. He went all over the world and kind of um, immersed himself in the landscapes that he wanted to paint. They say that this uh, Heart of the Andes was actually a compilation of everything that he saw in South America and not just one particular scene. Um, but, uh, so this became, uh, he did it, it was like, like a five by 10 feet painting and he was kind of a bit of a, a showman. So he brought it back to New York to be exhibited because he wanted people to, to see it. And I think they said over like over a three day window of viewing, uh, and he would set it up. So it had benches to look at it and he did it, you know, with uh, drapes around it and kind of made a production out of it, so to speak. Um, but they brought in about 12,000 people, uh, got a huge response, and then they went, went over to London and displayed it there and had was very well received and eventually landed where it is now, which is at the uh, Metropolitan Music, Museum of Art in New York City. Some of his other stuff is in the uh, National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. So at the time that he was living, he again was a little after Cole. He was, uh, he did, he was considered... Um, the best well-known artist in the United States. And uh, I think the, this, this painting, The Heart of the Indies, was the, uh, the most popular and sold for the most amount of money than any painting that an American artist had done. So, um, so one thing they mentioned too, that he was part of that same um, movement in that group that Cole was part of, the... Um, what do they call it? The Hudson River Valley group, right? So uh, he was part of that. But one distinction they make here, is, um, they say, well, Cole, where Cole was interested in the allegories he found in nature. So we remember that he did the uh, seasons and kind of equated those to the seasons of nature and of life. Um, church was more interested in apprehending the beauty of the natural world and letting it speak for itself. So he really would just let God be um, revealed in just the beauty of his landscapes. He would sometimes put a cross in them. They mentioned this, uh, they do have a very small cross in the heart of the Andes, the one that's highlighted here. Um, some of the other uh, paintings that he did that had crosses in them, literally to the memory of Thomas Cole, cross in the wilderness, um, as well as the one we, we have today. But otherwise he just kind of let it speak for itself or he might put a natural cross in the, the picture. So his, his Christian faith was definitely a big part of his motivation. Um, I think he was a reformed Dutch, Dutch reformed Christian. So there's no doubt that, um, there was a Christian kind of spiritual approach to this. Um, they say that one of the reasons he did so well in depicting nature, cause he was an amateur naturalist himself. Uh, he fascinated, he was fascinated by the sciences and botany and geology. So an avid reader of, uh, natural topics. So traveled all over the world again, as we mentioned, immersed himself in the natural. So, so he really, uh, he really knew the, uh, the, the topic, not just visually, but even from the natural components of how things were made. He had a great way of using light and playing with light in his pictures. Um, they mentioned that towards the end of his life, he kind of fell out of, again, not like, unlike Cole kind of fell out of popularity. The, the, uh, the art world kind of moved on to new things. Um, but, and then eventually like arthritis prevented him from painting anymore. So he couldn't paint in his last years, but, uh, he did his last painting he did was the house that he built on H the Hudson river. And he had it built to the architectural style of the Parisians, um, kind of, a, uh, kind of epitomizing the best of architecture that he saw around the world. And so he did it, um, painted it, uh, overseeing the Hudson River, which is where he lived. And uh, obviously the connection with the Hudson, Hudson River um, artist group. So uh, another one of his great paintings is Niagara Falls. He did um, 
other ones they say that he sometimes would do you know stills but a lot of time he would most of the time he would show movement and his the movement in nature and the power of movement uh cotopaxi was one about with the vo erupting volcano the icebergs um the niagara as we mentioned so these showing the power and the movement of nature so uh again a new artist for me new artwork that i had not seen before so that's the heart of the andes by frederick edwin church painting of 1859 next we will move into some stories fairy tales by george mcdonald uh, written in around 1871. So hope you'll join me for that. Thanks for being here today. Have a great day and God bless.